person from standing barefoot on a toilet seat. Uh, thank you, Mrs Fish. Bye. Bye. Miss Turnbull? I knew a girl called Rachel Turnbull when I was little. She's a bit odd. Smelt of biscuits. Margaret Heslop. I was at school with a Margaret Heslop. Very strange girl. Had a twitchy eye. Margaret? Rachel? Margaret? Gosh, look at you. You look great. Oh, thanks. Uh, sorry, I, I don't mean you didn't then. I just didn't recognise you without glasses. Oh, right. <laughs> How have you been? Really great, thanks. <laughs> you still got that bicycle? You know, the pink one with those ribbony things on the handles? No, no. No, of course not. You probably have a car now. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of car is it? Mercedes. Oh, nice. Oh, um, you had that turtle, didn't you? Twinkle, yes. It was ill. She died. Oh, I'm sorry. So, what have you been up to? I'm a therapist. Oh. I was working in L.A. Really? Yeah, but I got a little homesick and now I'm back in London with Matt. Matt? I was treating him for clinical depression and alcoholism. Isn't it depressing listening to people's problems all day? Well, not at £200 an hour. £200? Rent's not cheap in a prime location like Mayfair, but hey, that's where the clients are. Oh, oh, yes. Well, most of them. They're not all film stars and supermodels. Anyway, what about you? Um. invite her over. You, you haven't seen her since she was eight. Well, I didn't know what else to do. She said she wanted to get together and she was curious about what sort of husband I ended up with. Oh, really? Oh, she's so successful and gorgeous looking. Mm. It makes me feel awful. She even knows George Michael. Oh, but you said she was such a drip at school. Yeah, but so is George Michael. Apparently he was really fat. She was saying people who were shy or felt rejected as children often end up really successful in later life. Really? Well, not always. Ugh. Do you think vegetarians can detect a chicken stock cube? Like any flavour at all is enough to sound alarm bells if you're a veggie. Oh, it's really bland. Add some bacon. What? Oh, some vegetarians eat bacon, uh, I think. Oh, you're thinking of Jewish people. What? Some Jewish people eat bacon. Mm. It still tastes horrible. Uh, have we got anything in the freezer? I can't serve them frozen food. She knows George Michael. OK, OK, just a suggestion. <laughs> well, what's in there? Uh, tofu and seaweed loaf, cranberry and miso spring veg... Uh, nothing, really. Oh, this is stupid. You haven't seen this woman since you were eight. What are you going to talk about? Hopscotch? Oh, you just don't like me seeing anyone from before I met you. You see your parents? That's different. Look, Margaret, we all have to grow up. Move on. Hmm. Did you get the soft drinks? Yes. Blimey, a teetotaler married to a vegetarian. I bet Christmas is fun at their house. Bob, he doesn't drink because he had a drinking problem. Don't make a big thing out of it. OK. Oh, we need to make the lounge look sort of very slightly untidy. Like we're too busy to worry about that sort of thing. There. Oh, Margaret, you're fussing too much. If she's a real friend, she won't expect you to be perfect. I mean, I love you and, and I have no expectations of you. It's them. Remember, be yourself. <laughs> William, Elizabeth. Hello. Oh, Margaret, what a sweet little house. I haven't been to South London in ages. It's very pleasant around here, isn't it? Nice. Mm. This is Matt. Yeah, nice one. Oh, yes. Uh, come in, come in. Oh, what nice little dogs. Oh! William, sit right now. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Bob Fish. <laughs> Matt Campbell. Nice one. Uh, uh, oh, right, yeah. And, and you must be Rachel. Very interesting to meet you. Very interesting. Um, so can I get anyone a drink? Um, I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be a real drink, obviously. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, liquid of, 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 of some kind. I'll have a scotch on the rocks. Oh, uh, me, uh, me too. You don't like whiskey? Uh, I do. Oh, well, OK. Uh, Matt, why don't you come in the kitchen and choose something from my vast array of uh, tempting non-alcoholic beverages, eh? <laughs> Good call. Uh, uh, 
Uh, mineral water, alcohol-free beer, uh, alcohol-free whiskey. Aquamania, a blend of mineral style water and natural tasting fruit flavours. Yeah. The water's fine. Uh, still or sparkling? As it comes. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you fizzy because it's more like a real drink. Mm hmm. Well, what's really essential in a relationship is mutual respect. That's what's so wonderful about Matt. He has complete respect for me and my goals. He supports me without smothering me. That's good. <laughs> mm, thank you. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. <coughs> I've met quite a few who eat bacon, actually. Mm. Pudding, anybody? No, uh, no. Oh, no, Couldn't no, I'm, I'm absolutely thing. stuffed. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yes. Uh, lovely. Uh, thanks, Bob. More wine? Oh. Uh, 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 just, um, just for us. Oh, thank you. Margaret, I'd love to see those old photos you were telling me about. Oh, yeah. Um, they're up in the loft. Uh, come on, we'll go and have a look and leave Bob to clear up. Uh, Matt. <laughs> what, um, how did... How long is it since I had a drink? It's okay. I don't mind talking about it. Five years and 37 days. Uh, and how did you stop? I mean, how did you decide to stop, um... Pressure from... No, no, no. She encouraged me and supported me, but it has to be a personal decision. And that's why I'm not obsessive about it. I'm not one of these rehab bores. Good. <laughs> they are boring, aren't they? <laughs> that's your coffee? Uh, yeah, please. That's my addiction. Coffee. Don't suppose it's doing my heart any good? Well, I doubt it does more harm than alcohol. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. Caffeine addiction can be a problem too, you know? Not like alcohol. <laughs> uh, no, no, I suppose not. Interestingly, bacteria dislodged during dental treatment can be bad for some people's hearts. And as a dentist, you what have to... What about the liver and kidneys? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Well, the reason I ask is that I saw this really interesting article in one of the Sunday papers. You'd be interested in this, as a medical man. Oh, yeah, <laughs> quite. Yeah. Ew. Uh, and this is the effect of... Alcohol, yes. I collect these out of interest. Uh, here's one from October's New Scientist. Great photo. <laughs> Say cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that stripy top. Gosh, look how happy I was. I mean, obviously I'm happy now, but somehow I just don't look as happy in photos anymore. Really? Do you need to talk about it? Well, that's more complicated. Look, you don't want to hear about my boring life. Why do you think that, Margaret? Well, you're not on duty right now. Anyway, I'm not a celebrity. Margaret, why the low self-esteem? I remember you bursting with ambition. Really clear goals. You were going to be a ballerina. The first woman in space. A fairy princess. What happened to that sparkle? Have you done the things you always wanted to do? Well, there's probably one or two things on that list I haven't done. Uh, is that a liver or a kidney? They couldn't tell. Uh, and this is something that... Well, I must say, it's a fascinating collection. Yes, so, uh, was, was health a factor then in your decision to, you well, know? Not really. Although I feel an incredible energy without that toxin in my system. No, there was just this day when I found myself thinking, I need a drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so, what exactly happened then? Did you just wake up one morning and think, ooh, which goes better with Cocoa Pops, a fruity Chardonnay or a light Frascati? <laughs> no. It was when I got in from work. That was it. I realised I was dependent. So I made the call and joined the group. You should come along. You'd enjoy it. You could come and talk. What about? Anything. As a newcomer, you'd be very much the centre of attention. Really? I could talk about teeth. Or about drinking in moderation. Why do you feel that you need to drink? I don't. Well, sometimes it's nice to stay in and curl up with a bottle of wine. And... Is it the curling up or the wine you like the best? Um, well, I... This is making you uncomfortable. You're obviously not ready. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready for another glass of wine. <laughs> Bob, listen to yourself. Go on, say it. I need a drink. I need a drink? So what? No, no, that's that's not true. I don't, I don't need it. I can take or leave it. There you go. Moments passed. Ah, I 
Just have one last sip. No, I don't need any more. I'm just going to pour it back in the bottle for another time. Oh, God. Oh, oh damn. Oh, damn. <sighs> well, sometimes I just wonder what it would have been like if I'd taken a different path. Listen, Margaret, why don't you pop by the office? We could continue this there. Oh, but I don't. No, I insist. Payment in kind for lancing my bunions. What colour's your wee supposed to be? Uh, yellowy usually. Oh, that's all right then. Ah. Ooh, ooh. Gonna see Matt and a few of his friends tomorrow. Bit of a boy's night out. Oh, really? Uh, actually, I'm seeing Rachel tomorrow night. A bit of a girly chat. Oh, it's nice. Mm. I'm very happy with the amount I drink, actually. Oh, I love this couch. It's a proper one, isn't it? Yes, but let's get back to your childhood. Tell me about before you met Bob, your last days of freedom. Oh, uh, well, I enjoyed being the centre of attention, you know, with, with boys. I could have had my pick from a few, but I was looking for something more serious. By then, I knew I wanted to be doing something in the medical line. I suppose that's how I first got talking to Bob. he just graduated. He was quite glamorous then, rebellious. In what way? He wore sunglasses. Hmm. I changed in a few ways after we got together. What ways? Well, he became more flatulent, didn't want to go out as much. Oh, he took me to restaurants. They didn't deliver in those days. I'll go for the curry, please, and an onion bhaji. Oh, it is called a bhaji, sir. An onion bhaji. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, yes, uh, I'll have one of those. I am an alcoholic. Nice one, man. Good man. Well said. Brian said, everybody. A big man with a big problem. All right, everyone. We have a guest tonight. His name is Bob. Let's give him a big, warm AA welcome. Hello. 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 Hi. Welcome, Hello. Welcome. 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 Bob, can I say on behalf of everyone here that this step you've made coming here tonight is the biggest. Oh, well done, yes. mate. Yes. Nice well, thank you. Yes. Uh, pleased to be here. Can I just stress that, in fact, I am not an alcoholic. Um, I like to drink, and I'm comfortable with it. Hmm. So, what I thought I'd do is sort of just talk about where I'm at now, uh, having looked at how I got to this point, and, and then we can have a, a broader discussion um, about, about me. Right, so, um, my parents were okay. No drink-related problems. <laughs> uh, Dad was a bit of a grouch. Hmm. Peter was Mum's favourite, um, and that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite content, really. I'm quite content. I mean, I love Bob, and I enjoy being a shropodist. Well, enjoy's perhaps the wrong word. I, I am a shropodist. Did you want to be a shropodist? Well, I think it was Bob's idea originally. When we first met, he used to say what a marvellous surgeon I'd make. But, but after a few months, he started saying it was an overcrowded profession. Find a part of the body that's most nasty and corner the market, he said. You might as well specialise now and avoid all that training. And the years went by and I went to nursery school. Dad was worried I'd get picked on. You've got to stand up for yourself, he said. Yeah. But Mum thought it would be better if I submitted to a light beating now and again rather than create a scene. Hmm. Dad was quite <laughs> macho, I suppose. Yeah, He's uh, been in the war. Could we get a little closer to the present? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, potty training, mm. learning to read, squash mm. sandcastle. Stung by bee in bath, disappointing Christmas mm. presents, Peter Mum's favourite, yeah, yeah. Um, da. Ah, so, the years roll by and I start primary school. Oh. I remember I wanted to join in the football in the playground. It's your decision, Bobby, but you don't want the other boys to laugh at you. Uh, of course, Pete was always sporty. I asked Dad to teach me to play football, but he said, It's a gift, something you either have or you don't. Like Meccano, which Peter also had. Maybe Bob is afraid of you doing anything which might somehow overshadow him? No, he's just overprotective. He just doesn't want me to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. I know it's because he worries, but it puts me off trying anything. 
Oh. Flamenco is bad for the joints. Aromatherapy makes you sneeze. I was going to join a confidence building class, but he wanted to give me a lift and, and wait outside in the car. Yeah, I, I know it was because they were worried about me, but it was only a school trip to a rubber band factory. Yeah, could we skip forward a few years? I'd like that, man. Yeah, that's a good I'd idea. Really yeah. Yeah. Sure. Please. Yeah, yeah, we want to leave time for questions. <laughs> Here we are. <clears throat> I'm 14 and I've got to choose language options. Oh. My dad said Latin. Then you can pursue a medical career. But it's a dead language, I said. Well, Grandpa's dead and we love him. Let's not go abroad, he says. We don't want you getting the squitters again. But don't you think that he's as insecure as you are? And that he's hiding it? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it was him who got the squitters and it was only a day trip to Boulogne. No one listened to me. They just decided what I should do. I mean, who knows? I, I, I could have been a, a basketball player. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, I, I like Bob, being Bob, tall. I mean... It... Maybe we should break for a bit. Well, we could go to the pub. Oh, God, I'm, I, I'm sorry. We can go to the pub, Bob. We don't hide away from life. You have to confront the issue. Oh, that's we're right. We're not killed. Right. Exactly. You've got to face it head on. No, we're not. What have I done with my life? Why didn't I ever take some chances, travel, drink whiskey? My choices are always the safest. Oh, look at this dress. Margaret, maybe it's time you took some responsibility for your own decisions instead of blaming Bob. Let's face it, you're like a little rabbit who gets startled in the headlights of a new opportunity. What do you mean? Now you're sticking up for Bob. I thought you were my friend. It's as a friend, Margaret, that I suggest you stop hiding behind Bob and start laying down the groundwork to develop your own independence. It's never too late to go from cowardice to courage, pain to power. Well, you can talk. You were the one hiding in the loo during the school pantomime. I had to play both ugly sisters. Come on, Margaret. Let's not regress 30 years. We're all grown up now. But for the record, I'd actually been locked in the toilet by Paul Tibbetts because I wouldn't give him his pencil case. You liar! It wasn't your pencil case, it was mine. You stole it from my satchel. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have the odd paint every now and then. You've got to prove that you've got a sense of control by having the odd one. Beer doesn't really count anyway. Yeah, yeah. Even down in my career, controlling me. Yeah. Medicine's overcrowded. Specialised. All right, they meant brain surgery and I became a dentist, but that's their fault in a way. Bastards. Bastards. You're not letting me speak. Oh, sorry, sorry, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Right. So... Then I met Margaret. Margaret! Whoa. Whoa. She was beautiful. She had lovely long trousers. And her teeth were well, in need of only minor scaling. And I decided, not Mum or Dad, and I, I didn't care whether they would approve or how she compared to Pete's girlfriends. And I worked so hard, turning the collar up, sunglasses, Oh, she must have realised I was doing it to woo her, you know. Same as the, the not farting thing. Let's go a segue. Well, oh, absolutely. Oh. But first, a toast to my beautiful wife. Bob's beautiful wife. No, you were weedier than me. No, I wasn't. You were afraid of ladybirds. You were afraid of buttons. Uh, at least I didn't smell of biscuits. At least I didn't smell a biscuit. Stop copying me! Stop copying me! You're only doing that because you can't think of anything clever to say. Well, you're only saying that because of your chronic self-loathing and lack of inner confidence brought about by a fear of rejection and a refusal to confront your fear of... of... Uh, buttons! Oh, shut up with all your fancy jargon! Now I remember why I haven't seen you in 30 years! You are really irritating! I don't need you to waltz back into my life and give me all your smug opinions about how pathetic I am! And call me a bunny? <laughs> well, maybe I am a bunny, but I'll crawl out of my hole and I'm good and ready. Thank you very much. Oh. Um, Bob, I, uh... It really bothers me that you never encourage me. Uh... Oh. Hmm? Oh. Um, Bob, I, I need to talk to you. Oh, yes, Margaret, but, but I've got to tell you something first. That you are the one thing in my life that I chose for myself, that, that I wanted so much that I did any stupid thing I could think of to impress you. 
Everything I did before was because I was discouraged and pushed and steered and, and then you came along and, and if I ever thought that in any way that, that I'd dampen your spirit or, or, or discourage you the way my pa parents did, well, I'd take myself out the back and uh, I'd shoot myself like, like, like a dog because you're perfect and I would never want to change you in any way. I'm sorry, I I'm going on. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Well, I just feel that, um, y y you know...